I ate a protein bar. It was terrible. Which one? I have a weird relationship with those type of protein bars. Okay. Because like, it really helps you on a pinch. You're starving and you're going to just like lose it. It's, uh, yeah. And then it saves you. But the problem is you never really enjoy it. You're kind of like, man, I really would prefer to have an actual meal. Yeah, because essentially you're just eating like a, a brick. <laughs> Somebody then, got, uh, you know what? They got to recommend it me. It comes out that way, too. <laughs> they got to recommend me some protein bars that are actually good. Because I feel like I keep, I don't know. There's got to be some magic protein bar out there that's actually good and I'm going to enjoy eating. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm looking for that magic bar. <laughs> I'm sure there's one else. There. Somebody's going to recommend something. I don't know. Maybe the company will even send some. Send your protein bars over here. I'll try them on, on the show. If you really, if you really got a good tasting protein bar that I don't have to feel like a terrible person after eating it where I'm just like why did I do that because that's how I feel about most protein bars maybe they're not supposed to be that good really it's I mean, like uh do you just eat one or multiple no I would never eat more than one in a okay. at a time that's that's insane do you have a preference like a flavor no, I mean, if there's peanut involved, then, then that tends to, like, a chocolate peanut butter. But I, it's all simulated flavors and things. And, mm. um, I don't really normally go for the fruity one. I, look, man, we got a lot to talk about. No one came here for protein yeah, bar talk. Yeah, let's not waste time. I don't know. Maybe somebody did. Protein bar talk 2021. No, nobody did. What do you got? Oh, I saw this, actually. The uh, retractable rear camera. Oppo phones. They showed this off. This is kind of prototype status. Chinese manufacturer teases new tech ahead of its forthcoming Inno Day. So they have like this innovation day. Yeah. And they call it Inno Day. And they're always showing off whatever the next thing is, the next uh, tech that they're working on. And in this case, it's a retractable rear camera. And they're showing it getting spritzed with water. And they're dropping it. Yeah, it kind of uh, tucks away. Um, back into its compartment mm -hmm. when it realizes some sort of accelerometer sensors just off. Now, we're not talking about, to be clear, to mm. be clear, we're not talking about a retractable front-facing camera, which we've seen from Oppo and others in the past, where you would hide the selfie camera and it would be motorized and pop up. Yes. Because that one had a similar effect where if it was dropped, it would quickly retract as well. Yes. So it's a similar tech from that standpoint, but this is on the rear. This is a rear camera module that pops outwards and then keeps the phone slim when it's popped in. Yeah. Even though it has a camera bump, I mean, imagine without the uh, retractable camera, it could be way, I guess, way deeper. Hmm. Most pop-ups are annoying, but not our self-developed retractable camera. On the camera phone itself, along with retractable cam text, the camera module markings show that the sensor is one over 1.56 inches and the lens is 50 millimeter equivalent with an f2.4 aperture, which would make it around two times longer than the phone's main lens. So it's a little bit of a zoom to it, as the lens is clearly marked 50 millimeters on the teaser video. So it's not like you're getting a crazy zoom out of it. I presume... Zoom, presume. I presume that you could utilize this tech, these motors, for all, all types of different camera modules. They just so happen to show it off here with a 50 mil option. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like it. I like motors in phones. It's always exciting to look at something different. Did we reach out to them? Are they going to, can we take a look at this or can we play with this or what? Yeah, I, I told the. Uh ryan to reach out yeah i mean I, I wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind checking that out i'm curious what the advantages might be mm -hmm. doordash <laughs> speaking of uh fast food here did um, you skip a story yeah the other one was actually um pretty interesting but it's very like do it's it about us actually do it oh okay car thieves are using air tags to track vehicles i read about this you did? Yeah. Do you know where? Yeah, here, locally. Yeah, York Region. York Region. York Regional Police said at least five vehicles have been targeted by car thieves who used Apple's item track. Of course, when they first came out, we imagined they could be used for nefarious reasons. Mm -hmm. Now we have evidence right around the corner. Who knows? Maybe you maybe you already got these planted all over you, Will. 
you're in York, you're a guy in York region. Yeah, I planted. You're in there. Hey, it's you're in not there. doing the planting. You can't <laughs> admit to something like that. It's not even true. All right, so scroll, no, no. scroll down. We'll do the top paragraph here. Apple released the AirTag in, yep, to aid in tracking keys, luggage, and so on. Since September 2021, officers have investigated five incidents where suspects have placed small tracking devices on high-end vehicles so they can later locate and steal them. Mm -hmm. Brand name air tags are placed in out-of-sight areas on the target vehicles when they are parked in public area, uh, public places like malls or parking lots. Then thieves track the targeted vehicle to the victim's residence where they, they are stolen from the driveway. Oh, man. That's yeah. rough. I mean, with a car, it's, there's so many little compartments mm -hmm. that you never check, like under your car. Yeah, you could right? just put a little Velcro on the back of it. Yeah, just some duct tape. A little stick, a little sticker, slap it in there, and you're good to go. So did they say, okay, here's some, here's some video of it happening. Wow. Just find out where you live, find out your schedule. Mm, you know, it's uh, easy. Well, finding out schedules. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I know it makes uh, sense. It makes sense. And here's the. I mean, you had to just taken off. With, you you uh, had to with the, with Alexis there. You had to imagine this type of thing could take place. These are so easy to use, and I would hope that there's some sort of feature in there to detect this type of behavior that they can look at the trends uh, around how this operates like uh if there's a way to tell see this was the problem when it originally came out was okay if you're on an iphone it will tell you that there is an unknown air tag nearby so you would sit in your car and your phone would alert you mm -hmm. but we were saying okay what if you don't have an iphone and then you're not getting that notification. So if there right. was some cross-platform way you could know or some sort of an app or just something so that the person knew, hey, I don't have an AirTag. Why is it? Why is there one being mm -hmm. identified in, in my car at the moment? Or if on Apple's end, they could see, all right, this was just placed into a vehicle that it's never been in before. I don't know. It's very difficult stuff to figure out. But ideally, you would just have that work on Android exactly the same way that it does on iOS, that a warning could actually be sent. Yeah, I feel like it's on Apple. I think there's a very ethical thing that he, they need to do. Yeah, I just, I'm Some starting sort of to think, I'm trying Android. to think about it from a software perspective. Like they, technically? They, they don't have those type about... of permissions on Android. Right. right. Without somebody opting into it. So it might have to be a third party preemptive app that somebody who thought they were a target could install from apple mm -hmm. which would then open up the necessary permissions to identify such a thing taking place yeah or maybe cars imagine if cars in the future had some sort of just scans check system where yeah. it's like is there a, tra a unknown tracker in the car it's all very interesting but yeah right around the corner man Mm -hmm. uh, air tags are designed to, uh, to start issuing the warning sometime between 8 and 24 hours after being separated from their owner leaving plenty of time for the car thief. So e even if the car thief had an iPhone, typically those warnings, I guess, are not being spit out in time. Right. They're just waiting for that vehicle to be in a secluded area where they can steal it. York Regional Police recommend storing cars in garages, purchasing steering wheel locks. Remember that? The, yes. Uh, the club? Yes. Can you bring up a club right now? I haven't seen the club in forever. When... When we were youngsters on TV, they purchased all the advertising. This company, yes. Well, I mean, that's like some sort of knockoff with a with a, a passcode. But I'm looking for the original, the club. They still sell it, seventy three ninety nine Canadian dollars, Canadian <laughs> Tire. Yeah. Damn, you don't want your stuff stolen. I don't think that will work on the on the yoke. No. On the yoke on the on the Model S. No, it wouldn't, eh? Well, I mean, Tesla has cameras. Sentry, sentry mode and... Yeah. Yeah, they're typically pretty tough to steal. Today's sponsor, DoorDash. And I always make the mistake of uh, filming this show when I'm starving. And hmm. then I'm like, oh, you can show me all the things I want to order right now, but I got to wait until I'm done filming to order. Yeah. I don't. Let me see what I would go for right now. I might go for uh, maybe some tacos. 
Uh, and man, I mean, I would go for that burger on the left. Or it's so much to choose from on DoorDash. You're aware of it. You know where to go when you're hungry. It's DoorDash. Whether it's uh, you know a, a well-known national brand of restaurant or it's the local Mexican spot, it's all on DoorDash. Look at that pizza north of Brooklyn. I've been. I, have you tried north of Brooklyn pizza? And how about the chicken sandwich on the right? Man, I'm too fired up. But it's not just food. You can get other stuff, too, including uh, all your essentials that you might have forgot at the grocery store. DoorDash will pick that up for you, too. It's so convenient. So much selection. DoorDash. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, toilet paper at 3 a.m., and other household items. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants, like Popeyes, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy, and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on the first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LULATER2021. That's 25% off, up to $10 in value, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter code Lou later 2021. Thank you to DoorDash. DoorDash launches ultra fast delivery in NYC with couriers who are actual employees. Unlike traditional DoorDash couriers, some Dash Mart workers will be eligible for benefits. So uh, you, you would typically have a DoorDash delivery person who would be, I guess, an independent contractor. contractor yeah. And, and there's been a lot of talk around how, um, you know, so, so how, how certain, how, how some of them may actually be more, act more like an employee. Mm -hmm. And so there's been, anyway, there's been a discussion around that description. And they're called Dash Corp. The company? Workers. Oh, Dash Corps. Yes. I get it. There's a key difference between the delivery jobs on the main DoorDash platform and positions with the new Dash Mart fast delivery service. Dash Mart workers will be part of what the company calls Dash Corps, considered full and part-time employees. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Instead of independent contractors, they'll be eligible for benefits and they'll have set schedules and be paid 15 per hour mm -hmm. plus tips. So this is going to help me uh, get goods even faster. 10 to 15 minutes of, of my order. Yeah, so they built a, a Dash Mart in this Chelsea, is cool. this is New right. York. Yeah, I like this. And they stock it with, uh, I guess, 2,000 items where there'll be runners just like going to this place to just grab quick toilet paper, deodorant, fresh and cereal. frozen, uh, fresh and frozen foods, household goods, local products. Company says customers can order via the DoorDash app or website. And those who have its Dash Pass membership won't be charged delivery fees. DoorDash will donate excess Dash Mart produce to a local community. Food bank. I mean, the key here is mm -hmm. 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes is really fast, obviously. 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. I mean, assuming you're near this Dash Mart location, but you could picture these things popping up, man. Yeah, I would imagine so. All those conveniences. Just for convenience. All those conveniences. Yeah. Tesla updates Cybertruck with four motors, four wheel steering, and crab mode. So this is to replace the, the tri motor with, I'm guessing it's the same price. And it's because um, the Hummer and the Rivian have four motors. They're quads, right? Wow. <laughs> crab mode, the Hummer showed off crab mode. Yes. Which allowed it to essentially like pivot the tire, like at the, the four tires at the same time to essentially move sideways. Yeah, kind of like strafing, but not completely. Did you just strafing. say strafing? Yes, I did. On this show right here? Yeah. Have you been playing Halo or something? <laughs> I'm thinking about it. It was out today. You're the just single player. You're just thinking about Halo? Well, yeah. It's a monumental day. Really? I guess I thought listeners you were, would be. You were already be doing the multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Did did that amp you up for the single player or did it yeah. kind of it did? It did, yeah. So you are playing this game. I'm a fan. So you are strafing. I am Master Chief strafing. <laughs> are you no are I, you strafing i haven't strafed in a oh, while okay, yeah. I, I, right. 
I, I, w I would like to try the game. We'll get on it. Maybe I'll try the game live on this show because it's the only way I'm going to get to try it. Okay, yeah. Maybe I'll set it up. We should do a segment in an upcoming show to try out the, okay. the mechanics of the new game because I did I mean, I played that stuff growing up, man. Yeah. I played those things. Yeah, you strafe when you were a young boy. Four motors, four wheel steering, and crab mode. Okay, but like, when are we going to get this thing? Still 2022, right? Yeah. How do they know about these updates? Elon Musk confirmed it. That's how. Uh, what He says, initial production will be a four motor variant with independent ultra fast response torque control of each wheel. That's sick. Love it. After being unchanged for two years since its unveiling, uh, the prototype was back in 2019. The automaker was expected to update the specs and pricing before the launch of the production version in 2022. This will replace the originally unveiled tri-motor version of the Cybertruck that was supposed to be the first one to market at 69900 and with over 500 miles. I guess that's the one I think I pre-ordered that. Or I, is it even called a pre-order? I don't know. I gave them $500 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it will have, there's a quote down there. Musk reiterated the Cybertruck will also have rear wheel steering. We'll have both front and rear steering. So not just like a tank, it can drive diagonally like a crab. So it's going to have the Hummer crab thing mm -hmm. as well. The tank one is interesting too. Because you could turn without moving forward or backward. You're mm -hmm. kind of just spinning. Yeah. That's that's cool. Yeah, it's like a radius. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a spinning top. Like a fidget spinner? I don't know. Okay. I'm cognizant of this ring that I'm wearing, by the way. The video's Are not you? out yet. I'm not going to talk about it yet. Video's not out yet. Okay. Maybe Hold it on. will be when they're watching this. But either way, you're going to hear about this ring. I've been sleeping with this ring. So you like it? Hey, man, I told you we can't go into it right now. Yeah, I mean, we could. But yeah, it's the new generation Aura ring. And, and I have a video coming out. I, ha I have been using it every day since I got it. Elon Musk said Neuralink hopes to start implanting its brain chips in humans in 2022 later than he anticipated. Well, I got to assume that's a hard thing to figure out. Uh, the whole implanting process. Yeah, with the brains and the humans. 2022 is going to be an exciting year. You get your brain implant, you get your Cybertruck. Man, uh, they're on the same schedule right now. Would you get the Cybertruck and get a free implant? That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm down for that. Those who pre-order the earliest get their brain implants. Elon Musk said Neuralink hopes to start implanting brain chips in humans 2022. He said first humans to receive the chips would be people with severe spinal cord injuries. I mean, we knew this going into it, that the target was initially going to be um, those with the spinal cord mm -hmm. uh, issues. Musk has previously given earlier time frames for Neuralink to implant its chips in humans. I mean, you got to get people excited, and you got to be optimistic, so you always go with the earliest possible. That's next year. That's pretty early. This was co-founded back in 2016. I didn't know it was that long ago. Oh, ne yeah. Neuralink. That's quite, that's quite a while ago. I don't think we started talking about it in 2016. No. It was not until later. Developing this chip, it'll be implanted in people's brains to simultaneously record and, stimu and stimulate brain activity intended to have medical applications. It's going to be medical first. Um, it's working well in monkeys, according to Musk. Mm -hmm. And we're actually doing just a lot of testing and just confirming that it's very safe and reliable and the Neuralink device can be removed safely. Here's what I'm thinking, Will. You got a Neuralink and you're really pumped about it, right? And I'm talking outside of severe spinal cord injuries, mm -hmm. quadriplegics, and what, what they're, they're, it's currently pending FDA approval. If you're a guy like Elon and you really believe in this and you, 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 you're a part of the production and the engineering, wouldn't you be one of the first people to try it out? No. No, I'm saying if you're him. Him? Like, no, don't, he doesn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be the first be? one to be on Mars either. No, I mean, Mars is a bit different. Mars is a bit different. It's obviously very unlikely that the first person to go to Mars is coming back. Okay. Well, he but, wouldn't but be the first brain, to drive this the brain first implant. Tesla in, anyways. He was the first person to drive Tesla. Really? Yeah, he was driving that Roadster around Silicon Valley and making sales pitches. Oh. I don't but, know if he was the very first person, <laughs> but he was right on yeah. the cusp of it. What I'm saying here is figure out that it's safe. The monkey's had it in for a while. You do the medical aspect, but once it's beyond that, I think you know one of the best, most convincing Marketing. things you can do is imagine him live streaming his own implantation. That's that's views, man. 
Oh yeah. Couple I would of, yeah. That's I think a it's a great idea. It's a couple of views. Yeah. And look, man, if it goes horribly wrong, you, br- you just peel it out of there. You just Can pe- you imagine? You just peel it out of there. Elon just freaks out and then That's what insurance is for. <laughs> what insurance is for, man. All right. You don't have to. I mean, I'm not trying to put pressure. Do do, do what you got. It's cool technology, you know. You got to do what you got to do. It's cool tech. It's a fine. It's a cool, it's a cool technology. Neuralink. Dead link. N- now you went from Neuralink to a dead link. Yeah, your links are all messed up today. You got RAM or what? You got any RAM over there? <laughs> the RAMs. <laughs> Doctor Dre is making music for an upcoming GTA game, says Snoop Dogg. If this is true, it'll be the first new music from the legendary rapper uh, in a very long time. Snoop. He's actually, I'm sorry, he's actually in the video game now. Dre? Or Snoop? Yeah, Dr. Dre. Dre, yeah. Yeah, he's in GTA 5 as like a, was it an expansion hmm. that they just released? Hmm. Or they're going to release? So I got to pay for Dre? You got to. I got to pay for Dre. Or maybe not, I don't know. Rockstar Games recently revealed Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition. Sounds serious. Mm-hmm which launches digitally next month and hits store shelves in December alongside this high-profile return to the franchise's past, though. The developer is presumably still working on its future now, according to comments made by Snoop Dogg on a Rolling Stone podcast. As I go on, like, different connection points here. It seems his fellow rap luminary, Dr. Dre, may be working on music for an unannounced GTA game. Snoop's comments also suggest he might be collaborating with Dre on the music. This is cool. I I mean, I kind of like this, where... It's like you're, you have to go into the game world in order to experience the new music. I mean, I'm sure it gets uploaded elsewhere as well, but it's kind of a cool collab. Don't you agree? I think so. I mean, we haven't, yeah. Well, Dre is like fully in the game. Yeah. He's a full out character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so it's cool. kind of exciting. He's in his studio too. Listen, this is what you, you got to do. You get to interact with him. This is what you got to do, right? You... You've been in this uh, media business for a while, and you've seen it all. You've had success, but you're you you know you're staying in it. You're not you don't have to go take a nap. You can find ways to to do yeah. cool things. And Snoop has been doing that. Like Snoop pops up everywhere. Yes. You're like damn man, I saw him. What did he just recently? Uh. Uh, Soda Stream. He's been he's endorsing Soda Stream. <laughs> really? Recent, oh. Yeah, recently I'm seeing this, and you know you just or, or remember what about uh, uh, Shaq? Did you see Shaq? He's got the Epson printers. Oh yeah. And you're like, where yeah, did yeah. this come from? Yeah. But you stay in the scene and uh, and you do it in your own way and you do it you you do it in your own style, and all of a sudden you 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 transcend generations. Sure. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen here because everybody plays GTA, and obviously the youngsters, and it's very fitting too. Then they see Dre, it's just cool, and then they want to go listen. Yeah, and they, so yeah, man, that's yeah, that's uh, especially if it's going to be actual original music. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Dre, Dre made some beats, man. <laughs> no kidding, eh? Like he made yeah. some beats, like some yeah, yeah. iconic sounds. Mm-hmm. So you got to check that out for sure. Huge jellyfish is extremely rare. Also, nightmare fuel. Yeah, it looks like it, it looks like when when kids are playing and they put the sheet over their head and they're like, "I'm a ghost." Yes. Like the and also the, uh, it's glowing in the middle. The most affordable Halloween costume uh-huh. is what this jellyfish looks like. Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute scientists captured stunning footage of the giant phantom jelly. One of the ocean's most elusive creatures. This is, yeah, I mean, it's a very cool gif right there. Phantom jelly. So they have a video as well. Um, Alien-like. Where the, where it lives is, uh, it's really cool. It's called the Midnight Zone. Let's go. A location in the water <laughs> column that's not quite the Twilight Zone or the Abyss. Mm. Which is uh, between 33 and I mean, all those, feet. those are all amazing. Midnight Zone, Twilight Zone, and Abyss yes. are all amazing. Very cool names. Yes. Um, and it's, it lives in between 3,300 to 13,000 feet. Below the surface, no sunlight reaches this depth of the ocean, which is frankly terrifying. 
to think of in the context of a ghostly jellyfish at a depth of the ocean where nobody could hear you scream. Yes. As you were dragged into the murky depths. I mean, you're never going to make it that far down anyways. Imagine you got to go 3,300. I mean, you're dead. Come on. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, you get compressed by the Stop it with your weight of the water. But it's just really, it looks like a nightmare. Yeah. But very peaceful. I mean, especially the shot. Oh, I like that angle. Peaceful angle. It's like ribbons. Yeah, definitely. Scroll up a little bit over there. Um, they also say how big it is. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. We can start with points to favor the giant uh, phantom jellyfish. Uh, the giant phantom jelly has been seen in the wild only about 100 times since it was discovered in 1899. This is the ninth encounter researchers have had with it despite doing thousands of dives using a remote operated vehicle. Wow. That is the definition of elusive. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> since 1899, it's been seen 100 times by humans wild man super rare and uh it's uh it's 10 feet long including the tentacles mm. but the bell like that giant part is three feet big three wow. feet wide i guess oh my god but they, look they just mentioned another jellyfish it's not as big as the lion's mane jelly which has 120 foot Tangle of tentacles. Jeez. Oh, that's so 120 scary. feet. Oh. Anyway, yes, very cool. Awesome find. Very cool. Congrats. All right, last one. T Rex gets Christmas jumper at Natural History Museum in London. Oh, uh -huh. I knew it had to be a London story because they said jumper. Yes. Did you know it's, what a jumper uh, was before? It's like a sweater. Yeah. But that's a, how they say it in the UK, right? Yeah. In, <laughs> in the UK, a sweater is a jumper. Mm hmm. Obviously, with uh, the pandemic, um, not a lot of people are visiting these museums. Hmm. So all across the UK, they decided to decorate um, these dinosaurs by outfitting them with Christmas spirit. Hmm. So in this case, um, there's a company that knitted this sweater for the yeah, T-Rex. It's not going to be easy, right? It's a custom fit. Yeah. They said uh, it's like 10 times the material of like a regular sweater. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Not much on the arms, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they could save some material on the arms. But, the, you know, the pattern that they made and it fits snugly on them, I thought it was pretty nice. The animatronic T-Rex is, wow, that's an animatronic T-Rex. That's especially cool, so that thing moves. Yeah. It's sporting the festive knit, which has been made by a family-run firm in, do you know how you say that, place? I, I, I want to see you try. Leicester? That's Lester. Is it Lester? Oh. I think so. Okay, well, yeah. Maybe we should do a pronunciation. Give it to us, Will. Oh, boy. No, because you look at it and you're like, there's a lot of letters in there. Don't panic. Lester, yeah. I was right. Lester. Oh, okay. But, it, but you. you look at No, but you look at it. <laughs> no, it's because it's, the only reason I would have brought it up is because I would have had the same moment you did, which was, wait a sec, how's that pronounced? And then yeah. I would have learned it. And retained it, thank yeah. God. Did you know about it before? I honestly think we might know someone who lives there. Both of us? Yeah, I think oh. I think Super Saf might live there. Super Saf? I, I might be crazy. In I don't Lester? I don't know. I, I just feel like Am I okay. search this up. Search this up right now. Let's get to the <laughs> bottom of this. Did I just make this up? Is this did he tell me this when he was here? Do you remember he brought us chocolate? Yes, born in Leicester. Oh, okay. You see, man, some things you remember. I don't the know more why. You know. I don't know some things you remember. Shout out, Super Staff. And this is another one. Oh, this another is another museum. So this is a thing that they're doing. Wait, that's all also, across the UK. All across the UK. Yeah. So they put on a giant Santa hat on this uh, T Rex fossil. It's a very uh, unexpected crossover. Christmas and dinosaurs. Yeah. But you know what's weird, Will? Uh, One of my that? most memorable Christmas gifts I ever got when I was a youngster was a book on dinosaurs. And there's oh, a yeah. video clip of me running around. I probably was like four or five years old. And I and there's a video clip. I mean, probably the video clip is gone because it's probably shot on like beta or something. Okay. But there's a video clip of me running around saying, 
I got my dinosaur book. You got your dinosaur book. What's your um So that's that's my dinosaur Christmas crossover. What's your favorite? I gift? like the triceratops. Oh, okay. <laughs> you like the tri? Yeah, I like triangles and oh, okay. triples and the big triceratops guy. You know, the big I felt like it's kind of a good mix. Yeah. Good mix yeah. of attributes. And everyone picks a T Rex or the Raptor, so I was like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Then that's, again, I was five. Those I mean, are easy. I feel like these things can change over time. And certainly if I had investigated uh, more deeply, I, I may select something else at a later date. It's quite possible. Okay. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> to all dinosaurs. <laughs> Every dinosaur. <laughs>